So we've got all these color models, which are ways to specify, like, this is the color that I want to show you. You could specify the color in CMYK or hue saturation value, hue saturation lightness, um, RGB. Uh, hex colors are another way to specify the color if you're doing, like, HTML coding. And then there's the idea of color palettes. So when we do visualization, we don't want to use every single color. We want a limited palette. One more callback to uh, my former professor, Professor Puhala. Um, he has these really nice uh, color palettes that show you the way that color gets organized on that 360 degree circle to form different kinds of palettes. So if you wanted um, 12 distinguishable colors, you could just go for 12 equally spaced uh, colors around the circle. Um, you could also use, you know, three evenly spaced uh, colors on the outside edge of the circle and then three a little bit further in and then a number more, um, one more layer in. Uh, if you wanted to do uh, primary hues, you could have just, you know, the red, blue, and you could have just uh, red, blue, and yellow. Um, and then if you're going to do secondary hues, uh, the sort of mixture of colors, orange, purple, green, and you can move in uh, a layer as well. Um, and then if you want tertiary hues, these are gonna be rotated just slightly. So um, these are sort of in between colors for, for each of the secondary hues. So uh, we've got primary hues, secondary hues split the difference between the primary hues, and then tertiary hues split the difference between the secondary hues. And that gives you equally spaced colors around the color wheel. There are various online tools that will help you find a good color palette. Um, one, again, that I know from art school is this Adobe Color Creator. And you can tell it that you want, uh, for example, five colors. You want them to be analogous. Um, so they should be kind of similar in a particular way. You could also do a triad. You could do complementary colors or compound colors. And you can see it's giving you the RGB colors here and then also the hex. I think it would also tell you in CMYK uh, or other um, other color models if you needed that as well. So this is a great way to find a color palette. Another very famous color palette is the Color Brewer palettes. So these were developed by Cynthia Brewer and some other folks at Penn State University. And they were developed as color palettes to use on maps. So when you go to the website, you see an example of a map, um, and then you could pick whether you wanted a multi-hue color scheme, you wanted a single hue color scheme. Um, you can say, is it supposed to be a sequential color scheme or a diverging color scheme or a qualitative color scheme? And you'll get very different color schemes based on those choices. So a uh, sequential color scheme would be good for something that is just uh, maybe a, a rate. Um, a diverging color scheme is something that's going from like really good to really bad, maybe temperature um, as well, like cold temperatures should be uh, blues and hot temperatures should be reds and then it should diverge. And then qualitative would be for a categorical variable. Uh, so if you, if you wanted it to be very distinguishable colors. So here are some color brewer scales. Uh, if you wanted to look at a sequential, you could have blues or greens or reds diverging, uh, you know, sort of from red to blue uh, or from red to green, and then they have these names. There's also qualitative sets called things like set one, set two, pastel two, dark two. And uh, these are trying to just modify one thing. So these should all be saturated at the same level, and they're just different hues. Uh, and the same thing here. These are these are paler or less saturated colors, uh, but they are very distinguishable hues. Um, here's an example. Um, I got this from a colleague named Jordan Krauser at Smith College, uh, and this is showing a comparison of two different ways that you could color three bars or three categories on a side-by-side -side bar plot. Um, and if you look at these two versions, uh, I'd like to know if you have an initial assessment of which one is a more appropriate color scheme. If we were in class, I'd ask you to just tell me, but just think about it for a second. 
So to me, this is the better color scheme because all three of these colors look to be saturated to the same degree. None of them really stand out uh, more than the others. Versus if I look over here, um, this yellow is way more saturated than this kind of greenish color. So it looks like it's emphasized. The blue is also a pretty saturated color. So these, um, they sort of uh, don't give you the idea that the three categories are equivalent in some way. It almost gives an ordering to the categories. And maybe it's a case where you really do want to be calling out these yellow bars, but most of the time if you have three categories, you want them to be sort of shown as equal. Same kind of thing going on here with this uh, pie chart, and uh, you could have a pie chart like this, or you could have one like this. This is a better color scheme uh, because in this pie chart, it's going to be hard to distinguish between this color and this one and this one. Uh, I think I'm not colorblind, so I can tell the difference between these two colors pretty well, but um, if you had trouble distinguishing uh, colors, that might be tough. There's also this these greens that are hard to distinguish, and if you were red-green colorblind, maybe all three of those would be tough. Uh, versus uh, this color scheme, um, it's very easy for me as someone who's not colorblind to tell the difference between this color and this color, uh, this color and this color, those are the closest ones. Um, so I can really tell what's what in that set. And just one more example, um, this one is looking really muddy. Um, this one is uh, sort of giving me the impression of, uh, you know, better overlaps with a nice screen blend. So we'll have a discussion in synchronous class about color palettes and what kinds we should use for categorical variables, ordinal categorical variables, and numeric variables.